Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. The encounter is simply too extensive and complicated to recount in full here. What would have taken us 25 to 30 minutes in our time took us three days in the experience. After collapsing dead, which I was not aware of because it had to have happened quickly, the complete events of my life flashed across my head in an instant. This process took less than a second, a fraction of a second in my opinion. It was pretty comprehensive in that it reminded me of many things I had completely forgotten about years before. Immediately following this, some automatic mechanism in my head started, causing me to involuntarily judge myself. This was done without any conscious or rational consideration. It was sudden and uncontrollable. As though some unknown program had suddenly activated and executed in my consciousness. Because of what happened afterwards, the verdict had to be bad. I had no idea what my opinion of myself was because there was no inner voice speaking or any other way of knowing inwardly. I fell through the ground, as if it were no longer solid and I were skydiving or something. I'm not sure how to put this experience into words because there's nothing I can think of to describe it other than the fact that I literally dropped through the earth, rocks, minerals, water and so on. It wasn't so much a tunnel as it was an actual passage through the solids, which were anything but solid at this point. As though the links between the Earth's atoms were irrelevant, and I just passed through them. I could see rocks, sand grains, earth, and other things passing by my vision. Despite the fact that I could feel things flowing through me, there was no friction or pain. It was, nevertheless, quite frightening. I banged into a floor in the hallway after what felt like an eternity. This was excruciatingly painful and the floor was exceedingly hard, flat and chilly. After regaining my calm and standing up, I discovered I had landed on a highly polished green marble floor within a hallway that led in both directions and was flanked by doors on both sides. The hallway walls were also clad in the same green marble tiles. These were fairly enormous measuring between 28 and 36 inches square. They were completely smooth and finely polished. Even though there were no lights anywhere, the hallways were well and uniformly lit, even though they were smoother than fine glass and highly reflecting. I was quite bewildered and worried at the time. I hurried down one corridor, only to find no end and only more and more doors lined the corridor. So I decided to try to figure out where I was and what was going on by opening a door. Behind this door was an empty room, with the exception of a woman and a toilet in the center of the room, which she was cleaning while on her knees. She wore tattered and unclean clothes and ignored me until I spoke to her. I inquired about her identity, where I was and what was going on. She instructed me to leave her alone. He's always watching. Go away she continued. When I urged her to stop and talk to me, she replied, I can't. I urged her to please stop what she was doing and explain everything to me. He is always watching, she simply stated. I need to clean the toilet. I urged her again to stop and she stated she couldn't and had to leave right away. I went down the corridor and entered another door and there was a man strapped to what appeared to be a barber's chair being force-fed by three ladies. The man was unable to speak because his mouth was constantly being pushed with food. There was a table next to the chair with food on it, and as the woman took up more food and shoved it into the man's mouth, new food appeared on the table to replace what had been removed and used. One of the ladies yelled at me to get out. When I inquired about what was going on and where I was, the woman said, You don't know? and laughed at me. She told me to leave because he's always watching and we can't stop. I ran a long distance, yet the hallway remained the same. There was nothing but unending green marble and doors on both sides. I finally unlocked the third door to see another man bound to a chair, surrounded by three beautiful naked women who seemed to be mocking him. 
I tried to find out what was going on again, but the women ignored me and the male couldn't speak because his mouth was gagged. So I rushed down the corridor again, reasoning that if I kept going in the same direction, I'd eventually come to an end or a junction or anything. I raced for a long time, but I couldn't locate an end to the hallway or the doors that lined it. I was nearing physical fatigue when a man emerged out of nowhere. He stood about six feet tall and had jet black hair and white complexion. He wore a nice suit with a black tie. He opened the door next to us and requested me to enter the room with him so he could explain everything. When I came into the room, the first thing I noticed was that it was roughly three or four times the size of the prior rooms I'd seen. The room had two chairs and a banquet table with nothing but a white tablecloth running the entire length of the table. He motioned for me to take a seat, so I did. He looked at me and asked if I recognized him. When this man spoke, I heard the best use of words I'd ever heard in my life. This man was clearly gifted with language and words. His use of soothing and consoling language. Furthermore, this man was quite attractive completely manicured, and his suit was very nicely cut. I told him that I had no idea where I was or how I got here. He stated he wasn't expecting me but was delighted to see me. He refused to answer my questions regarding where I was and instead brought up other topics to discuss. He inquired whether I was hungry, and I said that I was, but it wasn't what I was really concerned about at the time. When I turned around, the table was piled high with food. The cuisine was elegant and looked delicious. He requested that I eat something and that he explain everything to me. So, unsure of what to do, I sampled some cuisine. I don't remember precisely what I tried, but it was definitely the finest thing I'd ever tasted. I asked him who the woman I saw cleaning a toilet in a room was and why she wouldn't talk to me. The man stated that no one in any room would speak to me because they were not permitted to do so. He stated that the woman was cleaning the toilet all the time since it was never clean and that washing toilets was one of her pet peeves in life. Well, if she hates it, why doesn't she just stop? I asked. She can't stop, the man replied. I was rather perplexed. I inquired about the man who was compelled to consume food all the time and the other man who had three naked women dancing around him. The man who was force-fed food was gluttonous, whilst the other man adored sex and would now spend forever staring at the most beautiful ladies but never being allowed to touch them. The man asked me again if I recognized him. I responded no, but at this point, I was terrified. Things were not going well. Things were looking awful and strange. The figure in front of me introduced himself as Satan and invited me to his realm. I instantly jumped up and told him I needed to leave and that I had no business being here. Under normal conditions, I would label such a person as insane. However, based on what I'd seen thus far and how I felt on the inside, I only half believed this man. I dashed out of the room and down the corridor again. The never-ending corridor. I felt stupid, but I was afraid and kept running. Behind me, I could hear a man chuckling. Where are you going? I could hear him exclaim in my brain. There is no way out. I raced for what felt like an hour or more before finding another corridor that was perpendicular and similarly went in two ways, except this new hallway was red marble. I started racing down this corridor in one direction, hoping to find an exit, and all the while, the man in my head was yelling things to me. I don't remember anything he said because I was fleeing and trying to get away at this time. However, he was basically telling me that I couldn't leave his palace and that I couldn't stop hearing his voice in my head and so on. I ran for what seemed like an eternity until I came to another junction and halted. The new hallways were white marble, but there were no doors on the walls. I hesitated for a moment before continuing down this wide hallway when someone behind me began yelling at me to stop. I dashed as fast as I could. Something was chasing me down the corridor and I had no idea what it was. It appeared to be a massive head with no legs, arms or body. As I went down the corridor, the white marble transformed to white plaster 
and the white plaster walls began to look like they had human parts in them. As I rushed forward, it became clear that there were people pasted into the walls who were still alive. The plaster then changed into a flexible white material, and the individuals in the walls tried to grab me. The creature chasing me down the hall kept screaming at me to halt, but I didn't. When I got to the end, it was a dead end. I was so terrified that I ran straight into it, where I recall my face and body being crushed against the wall at the end of the corridor. But before I tumbled down, the monster after me crashed right into the back of me, driving me through the wall and into full darkness. The blackness is completely devoid of light. I couldn't see anything. I'm not sure if I was falling, floating, or soaring. I was no longer aware of gravity. I believe I went immobile at some point. Then, I believe a white light appeared and surrounded me, and I found myself in a chamber. I'm not even sure where I was. It was like being in a room, but there were no walls, ceilings, or floors. Just this magnificent white light all around. Then another man approached me and requested me to sit down, and a chair appeared behind me, so I sat down. This dude came in and sat in the chair eight feet in front of me. He inquired as to my well-being. I informed the man I was in a lot of pain, since I had just hit a solid wall and then been forced through it, feeling every bone in my body cracked and crushed. But somehow, I was fine now. In any case, I seemed fine. When I questioned who he was, he said, Well, don't you want to know where you were before and who that other man was? I informed him he was Satan, and he responded that was right and that I was in a section of hell. However, I was now safe. I inquired as to my current location, and the man stated that I was in a realm created so that we may converse. When I asked who he was, he claimed he was God. At this moment, I was at a loss for words, but I questioned him as to why he spared me from hell, and if that was what he wanted to do. He claimed he did it because he did not want me to die yet. In a word, I spent almost two days chatting to God in this white region. He let me ask him any questions I wanted, and he gave me the answers he wanted to offer. He informed me what had happened and who had put the pills in my drink. He assured me that he would fix my body and that I would be okay and that I could return home. He then informed me that he wanted me to go to college and not to stop until he instructed me to and that he would speak to me again. I thanked him and then found myself back in my body. When I awoke, all of my pals were gazing at me and panicked. I stood up and told them the person who had put drugs in my drink and that they were no longer my buddies. I asked how long I had been lying there and they said about 30 minutes and that one of them ran down the mountain to call an ambulance because I hadn't been breathing the entire time and they couldn't get a pulse on me or hear my heart beating and I turned completely blue and they tried mouth to mouth but nothing worked. I told them I was alright since God had saved me, then turned around and walked down the mountain by myself, and I haven't had anything to do with those people since. I went to university and graduated with three degrees and little money. My college career had been a catastrophe before this. At the end of my last master's degree, God spoke to me again and informed me I was finished with my education. He put me to work after I had completed other tasks for him. For a while, I was mostly distributing messages to various churches and speaking with various people. He and his angels visit me on a regular basis and speak to me. I saw the devil a second time, but this time it was on earth, and he recognized me and was furious, but he left me alone since God had commanded him to keep away from me. There have been numerous events since this, as this experience has never truly ended and still ongoing, but this is essentially what occurred during the initial session. Due to the length of the writing, I've also had to leave out a lot of details. I should point out that when I was in hell, I knew there was no way out because you can't kill yourself or be murdered because you've already died. That was the most terrifying feeling I'd ever had. You know, you can't even escape through death because Satan buries himself deep inside your skull the entire time, controlling you like a puppet.